Hi, I'm John Fink, Product Manager at Trigicon. One of the first decisions you'll need to make when selecting a scope is whether to go with a first or a second focal plane scope. Now, most American shooters are accustomed to a second focal plane because primarily that's what's been available, and if you've been a shooter, that's what you grew up with. So in a second focal plane scope, the reticle is going to remain the same size from the lowest setting to the highest setting. Okay? And However, the subtensions, if you have subtensions in your reticle, like most of ours do, your subtensions are only going to be usable you know, at one power, and in this case, at 30 power. You can do it with any, use the subtensions at any of the other settings, but it will, will require you to do some math in the form of division. In the case of a first focal plane scope, the reticle increases in size as you increase magnification. So what this allows you to do is use the subtensions throughout the magnification range without having to do any math. So for example, if a subtension is 5 MOA on 30 power, it's also going to be 5 MOA at 4.5 power, which is the lowest setting. Now this has primarily been driven you know, by competitive shooters as well as you know, military circles who typically use first um, focal plane scopes which allows them to use the subtensions to range for distance. Now, in the case of a second focal plane, if you're using a good quality laser range finder, you can laser range find to your target and then either dial up for distance or use those subtensions if you know where your holds are. So it's up to you to decide you know, which system is gonna work best for you.